Hello, I'm Mary, and welcome to the Tartan Topiary. On this channel, I always feature a book on the topic of interior design or gardening, and often share ways that this book has inspired me or general musings of life. Come sit and relax while we look at the most beautiful rooms in the world from the international editors at Architectural Digest. In one review of this book, it was presented as possibly an unrivaled survey of the most exciting contemporary interior design volumes across the globe. It was carefully curated by the editors of 10 international editions of Architectural Digest. Presented are almost 300 photographs of rooms that these editors deemed to be beautiful. And not only beautiful, but the most beautiful in the world. I am a traditionalist at heart, and over the years, I have come to terms with my love for all things classic. It is my design preference, and no matter how much I open myself up to contemporary and modern designs, my brain will just not fully embrace it. I do recognize its importance and significance in the design world, so I purchased this book. Since 1920, Architectural Digest has celebrated design talents, innovative homes, and products, providing endless decoration, lifestyle, and travel inspiration. With 10 global editions, this magazine is an authority renowned all over the world for publishing only the very best of today's interior designers. These diverse residential spaces span from the United States and China to France Italy, Germany, Russia, Spain, India, Mexico, and the Middle East, presenting each country's unique style manifesto. Some of the featured projects range from Mark Jacobs' New York townhouse to Tommy Hilfiger's Connecticut abode and Seth Meyers' Manhattan Duplex. Also, a sumptuous 18th century Italian villa and a Moroccan palace. As I looked through these, the most beautiful rooms in the world, I did find myself appreciating the burst of color and the fact that these rooms were an extension of the people who lived in them. I was reminded of how important culture is, and not just our own, and how the pages of this book did transport me to new places. I would like to leave you with three simple quotes. The first by Salvador Dali. Have no fear 
of achieving perfection because you'll never reach it. If you want a golden rule that will fit everything, this is it. Have nothing in your house that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. William Morris And a viewer who commented on my book review of Great Houses of New England. When people ask why I enjoy dark layered interiors and eschew all things modern, I simply point to books like this one and say, See, this is what perfection looks like. Now be gone with your boring mid-century modern sofa and your hippy-dippy basket collection and leave me to enjoy my Wedgwood and mahogany furniture in peace. Architectural Digest, The Most Beautiful Rooms in the World Written by the Editors of Architectural Digest This book is 336 pages. It is published by Rizzoli and it retails for $65. I am still in the process of redecorating one of our guest bedrooms. And last week, I shared with you some of the items that inspired me for this project. This week, I was able to choose the wall color and the drapes that I will be using. I also found some very inexpensive frames, and I'll finally be able to use the elevational prints that I purchased from Architectural Watercolors. This is a company located in Paris, France, and they offer some really beautiful prints, including reproductions of many 18th century architectural drawings and engravings. I especially love the historic garden follies and outbuildings. The prices are very reasonable, and I will share that information with you in the description box below. This first garden outbuilding that I am framing is an elegant Rococo pavilion that was designed in the late 1750s for a small German princely estate. It was by the architect Paul Eagle. It has since been destroyed, but I especially love the colors, the symmetry, and the ornate roof. I purchased about 15 of these various prints and I will hang them in a series along one or two walls in the bedroom. When most of us decorate a room, we usually have a budget and I'm curious 
In what areas do you spend the most money? Is it lighting, art, fabrics, antiques? And where do you try to pinch your pennies? For me, as far as this room, I've done high and low art, but the drapes and the rug, I think will have consumed the most of my budget. Leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. By sticking with a budget for these prints and frames, I was able to splurge a little bit on other items in the room. One is this framed lithograph engraving of an English coat of arms from the late 1700s. I love the ornate design and the colors. I purchased this on a website called Cherish.com. I will leave that information as well. One more piece that was not budget friendly, but that I just love, is this beautiful French Trumeau mirror. It had the perfect colors, with a painting that depicted a sweet scene of a young girl on a swing as her little lamb stands close by. It reminded me of The Swing, which is a painting by Jean Fragonard, which depicts a young woman on a swing with a beautiful billowing dress surrounded by garden statues that seem to disapprove of what's going on. Beneath the swing is a young man that looks like he's trying to catch a glimpse of the girl's undergarments. This was a very racy painting at the time it was completed in 1768. I have finished painting the room and although I am using Valspar paint, I chose a Benjamin Moore color from their historic collection called Southern Green, which is a soft sage. Benjamin Moore offers some wonderful colors based on a collection from the 17th and 18th centuries. This is the wall where the Trumeau mirror will be hung. Trumeau mirrors are a type of mirror originally manufactured by the French in the late 1700s. The word Trumeau is defined by the space between two windows, which is often where one of these mirrors would be installed. They are also often seen above a fireplace mantle or between two doors. They frequently have a decorative carved element or a painted scene above the mirror. Painting is something that I don't mind doing myself. It's not that I particularly enjoy it, but I find that I start thinking about issues in life and it can be therapeutic. My thoughts while painting this room were how quickly time flies. My youngest son will begin his junior year in high school this week. And I wonder where the time went. It seems he was in preschool just a couple of years ago. I have come to the resolution that family dinners, along with mindful conversation, will be something that I place high on my list of importance. And for that clarity, painting this room was well worth it. I will steam the drapery to get out all of the wrinkles and creases. And with the wall color and drapes completed, I can now focus on the rug and other things in the room. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, I would love if you subscribed. I hope you will join me next week as we look at Veranda Decorating from the editors of Veranda Magazine.